For English subtitles, push the subtitles button. Hallo zu einer neuen Reptil TV Folge. Mein Intro Tierchen heute ein Kauritik, also ein Netzpython, die Farbe heißt Kau. Ich muss zugeben, habe ich gar nicht gekannt bis vor ein paar Tagen. Wunderschön, so eine Art Calico Paradox Ding. Äh, super schön, gerade scheinbar relativ heiß in der Retic-Szene. Ähm, ja, das ist mein Intro-Tierchen für heute. Und ähm, wir machen eine tolle Folge, äh, einmal um die halbe Welt, bei demjenigen, der diese Cow-Retics als erster gezüchtet hat, äh, Kevin McCurley from New England Reptile Distributors, Nerd. Ähm, komm, kommen sogar drei Folgen, wir sehen wirklich spektakuläre Sachen von Boleni über äh, Tokis Zähmen, über äh, Corallus Batesi und Caninus, äh, Beuga Dentrophila kommt eine Folge, ähm, was noch alles, jede Menge tolle Tiere, absolut, es werden ein paar coole Folgen, schaut rein, ähm, ich freue mich tierisch drauf. Ja, ich bin hier mit dem großartigen, world famous Kevin McCurley. Um, thanks for the, no, you, you didn't invite me, I invite myself. That's okay though, I've That's known okay. you for a long time. So uh, I had no problem with you coming here to visit me at NERD and we, we talk. I've always known you and enjoyed you. I, I need to beg a little bit by email to uh, Kevin, where are you? First, first I had to talk to your employees asking three times, oh, <laughs> give me Kevin on the, on the phone or whatever. No, great. Um, yeah, we are Kenyon site. We know each other almost 30 years, 25 mm, years yeah. or something, Daytona time. Oh yeah, the first time, yeah, you, you invited me for a dinner because you want to buy dendrobates from me, you remember? In, Dendro, in da Dendrobates? Dendrobates, yeah, yeah, I think that was the, you, you, oh my God. it was in, in Daytona, it was almost 30 years ago. Wow. It, might, it will be 30 years ago, yeah, and you said, ah, oh, German guy, he might sell me the so yeah. here we have dinner. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wir, wir schauen heute rum bei Kevin. Um, es wird ein paar tolle Episoden geben, habe ich um, im Intro schon erwähnt. Ja, um, yeah. uh, upfront, thank you for showing me around. Really looking forward to see what you have here. I, I have know lots to show. Amazing, yeah, yeah. So this right here, I have no relationship with this, okay. But you can actually make Tokis quite friendly. And you're going to poop on me and it's just going to act crazy. But you can see, it's one thing if you're breeding Tokis and uh, you just, you, you keep them to have colonies and stuff like that. So I've, this, this Tokis probably never even been touched, but I can make friends with them. Come here, you're going to. And everybody thinks Tokis are like savages. Actually, Tokis are quite smart and you can make friends with them. I do these socialization videos, threads of trust, but what you're doing is you start teaching the animal that it can actually trust you and you have to have an episode with the animal without hurting it and you do like this passive handling. So I'm still controlling the animal, but I'm not holding it behind its head. And now I'm starting to win. So the next uh, therapy, let's call it therapy or the next, uh, you say episode, You do like the next day or what use what use it just yeah you can it, you can have a, an episode can be as short as 10 seconds and that builds if so if i have a an episode where nothing horrible happens to the animal and the animal's actually able to go oh, it wasn't so bad they're a little less afraid of you a little less afraid of you and as that happens you go into thinking mode much quicker but if i went and were to grab this guy behind its head and really yeah. hold it That could be a negative threat. I know what you mean. Yeah. So same but, with the snakes. But I'm when, just when doing people... passive. This is all so passive. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, and then I'll return <clears throat> to the cage. But I have videos on this. Even letting it go back into the cage, you want to let it go on its terms. If it runs out of your hand into the cage, thinks, "Oh, I've escaped you." So the thing is, is to have a thinking relationship with the animal's thinking. It's not terrified, and it pauses and it's thinking. That wasn't so bad and you are building trust. And when you build trust, you get the animal to now realize that you're not a monster. And that's what we all, you know, vie to have is these relationships. So I'll go get another one. If 
I go and take that, just this little cage. So I want her to kind of crawl back. Not not the greatest, but not terrible. So she didn't go too nutso. Uh -huh. All right, we'll get we'll get out a toke caging. Okay. Oh, uh, these are the. That's for like breeding. And so we'll go. We'll take her back in another room. And I just I do the same thing free handling, and I made friends with this pretty quick. We'll take it take it in the other room, but uh, you can see like there's tokes out right there. In these cages, you you the thing is you don't even realize how many tokes are in here until nighttime, uh -huh, and okay, then they uh -huh. all like you start seeing them all, and it's. Like there's a tail there, but they're hanging out in the tubes. Yeah, yeah, they are nocturnal, of course. They most, most of them are hiding. Yeah. All right, we'll go. Like here's a toe right here. So you say oh, to, he was just he was to just breed them. His, he's sticking his head out to to breed them. You breed them in family in groups. Family groups. Yes, yeah. we'll go back in here. Hi, baby. Hi. You just keep doing that. Okay. Okay, so here's just a, here's a nice female. And this is actually, this is actually an imported toke. So I just made, I just picked one up and just made friends with it. And it didn't, it didn't take long. Uh -huh. But that same free handling that I just did, the open handed, uh, and one thing very, very important, never act like it's going to bite you. I handle almost all the stuff like it's not going to bite me uh -huh. because if I start behaving like, oh my God, it's going to yeah, bite yeah, me, yeah, I know it changes my behavior yes. and you lose, yeah, 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 you don't yeah. flow, you yeah. don't flow anymore. Yeah, yeah. So these guys are so smart. So what you want to do, you want to, that's nothing. So now I get to shut her mouth and mess with the tail. And what I think actually happens is the camera, the, um, the focus of the camera causes uh, infrared light scattering all over. This animal sees an infrared. So you're blasting this with all this light and the animal's like, it changes its behavior as soon as you aim your camera at it. Okay. Boega do that, mangrove snakes and stuff like that. So she's just a little worried, but I'm not getting bit. And tokes can be wonderfully friendly. So yeah, it's amazing. Want, I was thinking with the with a captive pawn, it might be. This easier, is this is an import. Even yeah, an it's import. It, it doesn't really matter. Amazing. I can take. Uh, I mean, if it was an imported animal and something horrible happened to it, they're smart animals, so they they'll hold grudges, you know, towards humanity. I'm sure because the majority of all the toke geckos actually that are imported come out of the the medicinal field, so they're actually collecting and wiping out uh -huh. massive untold numbers of toke geckos to dry them and impale them yeah. on a stick and then they break them off and then they use their body parts as uh you know medicine i guess uh -huh, uh -huh. but here's a very very sweet animal yeah fortunately you know they are cited so uh they change too. everything with yep. the with the tokis the, the yeah they're i think they're now extinct in hong kong because they've been collected to the point of extinction yeah. you know uh okay. but Good. very very sweet animal i don't worry about bites uh, with tokes, if you are passive handling them, uh, there's different kinds of bites. There's defensive bites, which is eh, and just nails you a little bit. If I grab this animal, see if I get, get him to lick my, she'll lick my finger, just like uh, auriculatus, like you know, gargoyle yeah. geckos or crestes or lichianus. She hates the camera. You can just tell. She's constantly moving away okay. from the camera. But just... So people know you can make friends with tokes, and uh, they're an absolutely wonderful pet lizard that I love, and I'm getting back into my tokes. I love things that hang in branches. If it's boega, emerald tree boas, green tree pythons, particularly I really like emerald tree boas. So ones with the big front teeth. And uh, can go show, hi. Hi. That's uh, 
That's a basin right there. Yeah, Gnade Caninus. Uh, right. Um, Patesi, Patesi, yes, yeah. exactly. Very cute. And then, okay, so here, that's that's a basin, and this is a normal. Uh, this is uh, Guyana. The basins are the Patesi. Uh, this one right. wants to eat. Yes. You, yeah. He wants to eat. And when you say normal, you mean Caninus. Caninus, yes. Uh -huh. So like uh, Guyana and Shield nose. So Suriname and Guyana. Nice, now the thing is to get the Corallus tame. Oh, I make the, I, ma I make I make friends with these two. Okay, but it's, uh, the risk is slightly higher than with the Tokus because if they bite, <laughs> I do it like nothing. Huh? I do it like nothing. Yeah, yeah. I just I I get bitten don't, from a Corallus. I, so. <laughs> I don't get bit. Maybe maybe right now I get bit just for you. Yeah, it would be nice to see. No. Yeah. Just kidding. I. Let me see you for a sec. She's sitting on. That's a big female trying to cool down. Hi. Uh huh. Let me get her. Hi. I I talk to them all the time. That's just what I do. Come on. So now we are again with this canino, so not yeah. Yeah, she's shedding. You can tell. Um, so you you keep them together all year long for breeding? I, I, or ge you I, I generally do. It's just uh, I keep them like here's a trio right here, but so there's three cages. This is a unit, so they can go through there. Okay. Okay. Through yeah. here. No one wants to be in that cage. <laughs> this one is, that's a, a female. Hi. This is the male right here. And there's another one right there. Hiding. And behind. you you keep them all year long the same or you stimulate them? Uh, so the you, you're raining on them and you go through a cool down and stuff like that. So it's... It's, uh, yeah, they're going to breed. Uh, ultimately, my best success is I go through a period where it's, it's mostly dry. And then I, to, once they're conditioned and they're looking good and stuff like that, and the female potentially could create follicles, then you'd start raining on them a lot. If you could rain on them like an hour a day, that's really good. That really will, will get their uh, copulation up and stuff like that. Uh, right now, this is all new caging I designed. So... This is, these have been just moved into these units not too long ago. And uh, these are interesting cages. So the cage, if I, let me see, turn, I'll turn on a mister. Uh-huh. Oh, you, you have a misting system. Yeah, and actually I also have, uh, so see right here, this little, right there? Yeah, I see. That, that little nozzle, I shut it off, that's an air pump. And it blows air into this cage so okay. this is just just air and then the misters are going to come on in a minute oh, okay and, and then, what is the, what is the air for to get a so, better exchange of yeah, the air yeah. in the cage so i create positive pressure in there so uh -huh. i just put air yeah, yeah. In, just a low stream of air because i can let this cage spray it's like here's a water dish and i just take that and i put that between two perches it's you know designed. Uh -huh. I design okay. all this okay. stuff. Uh -huh. See the floor? Look at the floor. See the floor is angled. Uh, okay. And see the drain. So There's the drain water. Right. Uh -huh. The water is going down. Yes. And it goes through here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's a gutter system, and then it goes out to drain. My okay. toke geckos are the same thing. Turn the water on, and. Uh, and I up there is a heat panel. What is? Yeah, that's, that a, that's a Reptile Basics uh, 45 watt heat panel. And I set their basking temperature to about 94 degrees and they will bask like uh -huh. that. So everybody, you know, like cool, uh, emeralds, emeralds drink a lot of water. The problem is a lot of emeralds don't recognize water dishes. They, you, you get some that will recognize a water dish, water dish and then use it. Other ones, 
I think almost all their water is from spraying on them. And if I don't spray on them, those animals will sit five inches away from a dish, not utilize it, and they can get dehydrated. Yeah. Just just sitting there. It's really yeah. weird. Yeah. But yeah. spraying them um, seems to be a, a, a nice thing. And the, the temperature, you said the 89 is... Uh, 94 for the hot spot, but my temperatures <clears throat> get up to 90 in here, just the ambient, because it gets really hot during our summers. Okay. Um, but really, I think ultimately Emerald Tree Bow is uh, Fahrenheit, like 76, 78 Fahrenheit with a hot gradient all the way up to like 94 hot spot. So if you have this cage and the room temperature is... 76, 78 degrees, they'll go down here, they'll sit there when they want to get hot, they'll go right up to where that hot spot is and they'll digest their meal and stuff like that. And that seems to really work. If I were to take the animal and constantly put it at this hot temperature, it wouldn't really uh, translate very well for the health of the animal long term because after it eats, remember one thing, when these animals eat and they're digesting their food, they heat up. So they'll, they'll generate three, four, five degrees Fahrenheit of additional body temperature, their core temperature, as they're metabolizing their food. And people need to actually understand that. So there's there's you know some tricks with emeralds. I definitely, you know, I'm learning a lot, you know, certainly have not mastered it one damn bit, but I love them. Ein schönes Outro Bildchen. Um, Kevin hat viel erklärt, wie man Tiere zahm bekommt und echt wirklich ein, ein was was könnte ein well, what can be a better example to getting an animal tame than these dwarf caimans? Because they, they are not easily to get tame. Mm -hmm. They are. Mm -hmm. They can be nasty, you know. Um, also, ich hatte auch schon welche. Das sind echt normal, echt kleine Stinkzwerge. Um, yeah. Thank you for uh, having me here. Uh, now we, we we finish the work. Now we go and check out the. Heavy metal music. Yeah, Crotalis. Um, eben eine kleine Insider-Sache. So hobbymäßig. Was heißt, is it a hobby or you know, your main, it, it's a your hobby. main money comes from the music? No. No, no. no. Music is, is all fun. It's an outlet for all my frustration. Okay. Also, Leute, hört mal rein. Crotalus uh, heißt im Kevin seine Band. Um, hat er mir vor, I think you gave me 15 years ago. I got a CD yeah, from you. Yeah, that's the yeah, first I one. Yeah. Still had a memory. Uh, great music, I love it. Uh, vielleicht nicht, not everybody's taste, maybe, no. but it's it's great. I love it. Um, ja, Daumen hoch, wenn euch, wenn es euch gefallen hat, uh, Kanal abonnieren und uh, check Crotalus. Crotalus on iTunes, and there sadly is another Crotalus band that came after mine, but mine's Machines of Doom and Hate Until I Die are a couple of the albums. So how do we find out that it's your Crotalus it's, if we go on, on? Well, if you look for Machines of Doom or Hate okay. Until I Die okay, on okay, okay. the iTunes or Spotify okay. or whatever. Great. Thanks, Bye, Kevin. Guys. Thank you. See you.